Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. I'm here with Kerry from Baltimore Knife and Sword. You may have also seen him on the Man at Arms show on YouTube. I've brought my gold that I've mined from Washington State all of the 2024 season. I've brought four and a half ounces and we're gonna make some coins today. So we're here just kind of fooling around in the forge today. Um, you know, this is at my house. This is, we do a lot of hobby and all kinds of other stuff. But today we have something really special. Uh, Jason from Mount Baker Mining and Metals is here, and he's brought with him a stash of gold that he's mined out of his new gold mine. If you haven't seen my channel before, I do a lot of gold mining stuff. So we're actually going underground, we're drilling, we're blasting, we're refining some gold. And I'm really excited today to actually make a product. I don't get this experience very often where I can turn my gold into something that I can actually use, look at, sell. It's, it's a piece, it's not just a gold button. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty rare time when you get a quantity of gold that you can form into something, obviously, because it's a pretty big expense. So we're gonna be working with about four and a half ounces of gold today and gonna see if we can't make a vessel and then we're gonna do some coining for him so he'll be able to sell those coins on his eBay and on his YouTube. So we'll, we'll see how long that takes and the alloy of the gold will make a big difference because this is as dug. Um, so we know that we're pretty high, close to 23 carat, but that other material, if it's silver like he suspects, should be no issue. If we have something else in the gold that causes the edges to crack, it could be a big fight. We're just really gonna have to anneal it and get into it and see. Yeah, this has not been refined really in any other way other than the cupelling process. So having these acids, it's not, you know, store-bought gold or anything. It's right out of the ground. Yeah. It's whatever, you know, Mother Nature gave us. I want to show it to you. Are you ready for the, the big reveal? That is that is a wonderful thing. Boy, look at the color of that material. I think a lot of Americans are used to seeing 14 karat which is a more of a yellow, whereas this has a little bit of green tint to it. And it's really heavy for its size, <laughs> which is super cool. This surface is gonna hammer very nicely. We've got a, a small indent here where we're gonna have to just see how that is uh, because anywhere that might start a crack, we're gonna have to eliminate that crack or the whole piece could break. Worst case, we'll take this and we'll pour it into a mold that has a basic sheet form and, and kind of get past that. So I'm gonna hammer on this and we'll just, we'll see where we go with it. So I'm gonna be using a relatively uh, simple hammer. You know, this is kind of something like you would have found in your grandfather's place. But what we did is we just went over it real quick with a 240 grit and then a 15 micron scotch bright. We're not gonna worry about a mirror polished surface until we get farther along in the process. Uh, if you make this too polished now, it'll be slippery and it's a little harder to work the material. So we'll stick with this kind of soft satiny finish and go over the entire piece and see if we can't start getting this consolidated. You can see just even from just touching it now, how much that shows consolidation on the surface. But one thing that we noticed right off the bat that light strike created a crack. So we're almost definitely gonna have to go through a kneel and remelt on this. So we na now we know we have a fight ahead for us. So I think we're gonna have to go ahead. I'm gonna hammer just a little bit to get more of a feel, but uh, we're definitely gonna have to remelt this right away to see where we're gonna go with it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of anhydrous borax uh, just to keep this clean. So I've got a tip on my acetylene torch and just gonna give that a shot. And we're gonna try and get this button just molten initially, let it recongeal -con basically, you know, harden, and then we'll pull it out of there, anneal it, quench it in water, and then we'll try the whole hammering process again. The gold is so, uh, it transfers the heat so easily. Yeah. And you'll see some jewelers will actually use two torches on each hand. We're gonna let it come down and solidify so that it pretty much reaches the point where it loses color. Uh, and then we're going to take it out of the crucible 
and bring it up to temperature where it just starts to glow. We're really targeting 11 or 1200 degrees and then quench it into cold water and that will soften the piece. Should get us past this cracking phase. It's amazing you do all this work. This is a year's worth of mining in this little cup right here. And I really want it to work. I'm gonna start on this edge and just see how malleable the edge is. So we definitely have some surface cracking. Now, is, is that from, could that be from impurities that I didn't get out or it's is the it? only thing that I can think of off the top of my head. So we'll melt this and we'll go into, uh, pour it into a sheet and see where we can go from there. So we're not real sure why this piece is cracking like this. So we're gonna go ahead and break it so that it will fit in the Electromelt Crucible. Electromelt Crucibles are pure carbon and they will keep this very, very clean. So that will help us. It won't help if we have an alloy problem. It will help us if we have a cleanliness problem, which I'm not sure that we have, but it'll be a very controlled temperature and it'll soak. So it won't have the kind of dramatic differences that happens with a torch. So we'll do that and see if that will solve the problem for us. Yeah, very, very crumbly, but boy, how cool is that? We're gonna be pouring into a cast iron mold. And how, how preheated do you like it? We just wanna make sure that we're not chilled. I'm gonna be preheating this with a torch, not so much for the heat, but to actually get rid of all the moisture and we've sooted it with a little bit of acetylene and that'll prevent any of the gold from sticking. It takes a really steady hand to pour this material directly into that small hole from the crucible, which clearly I do not have. But thankfully I thought ahead and went ahead and put this on a metal tray so as the gold spills off the side, it falls into the metal tray. It actually cools very quickly, which allows us to clean up, put it back in the crucible, remelt to do this again. We're gonna take the torch and bring this up to where it has just a slight glow. So we're talking about about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit and then quench into water. This will soften the gold and allow us to run it through the rolling mill where it is being thinned until we're down to the thickness that we're required. Much like better, it looks with the carbon off of it. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then we're gonna see this surface change because it's gonna to start to get the feel of this surface. Bring it through. Oh yeah. Right, through with no resistance. And unlike where it had no resistance before, now, it's, now we've got a pretty big piece of material fighting us just a little bit. So this is gonna be our life for the next half an hour. <laughs> now we're going to get Jason involved. Let's see how he handles a set of tongs. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah. Oh, it's heavy. Oop. It's my first time with the tongs. <laughs> See kind of like little crack, surface crack? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like scaly or something. Yeah. Over and over, we continue rolling this until it finally reaches the thickness we can cut out. One of the things that we found is we still have some surface on here that would give me some concern. So I know we're not gonna raise anything. We're not gonna be able to kind of create a form like we were hoping to, but we will be able to cut this and make some coins. So yeah. we'll definitely be able to do some coining. Now that we have the gold rolled to the thickness that we're looking for, we have to get it to the right size. So we go into this round plug cutter and it's gonna cut this out for us very cleanly and allow us to go right into coining. So I've just marked off a couple of the cracks that I wanna stay away from and then we'll punch it out. So I'm gonna slide it in here at the 5 8 hole 
This is our punch. It's slightly raked. That slight angle will help us make the cut and it'll still keep the piece fairly flat. Now you can put this in and hammer it, but we like to use the press because it's very gentle. Working from some artwork that Jason sent me of his logo, I've plugged it into our 50 watt Rakus fiber laser and that's going to allow us to cut into this die. Unlike if you were hand engraving where everything has to be soft and then hardened later, while using the laser we can actually run this with a pre-hardened die. Wow! Incredible, right? That's incredible! And you could write on the gold and just dust it. So you're not actually losing gold, you just leave the surface, but we're going to cut in and get some depth, and then um, that'll strike into the point. That is wild! It has made this work really accessible to people who may not be able to do the hand engraving, and it does a pretty fantastic job. Not the same, but definitely works for what we need. As the sun sets, we now have everything we need to finish this project. The next morning, we surprised Jason with a trip to a local mine to see if we can dig up any fortunes of our own. Along the way, we passed several historical landmarks, including this old lime kiln, as well as one of the oldest railroads in the United States. This is the b &O Railroad. This is the old main line for the b &O Railroad. Cool! Yeah. After taking in the sights, we travel further into the forest until we stumble upon the entrance to this old copper mine. So since we had Jason here, and he's a mining guy, there just happens to be what I'm told was a copper mine originally that's walking distance from the shop here at Baltimore Knife. I've come down here mostly when I was hunting around the area for some iron ore, maybe to smelt, and didn't really find anything here I could work with. He's gonna take a look at the walls here and give us an idea of what we're looking at, because I don't really know. Yeah, no, it's funny being you know out west and all the mining history we have, I don't really think of Maryland as a big, has having any mining history at all, but when you think about it, you yeah. still had to mine minerals and you still had to process stuff, and so I'm excited to go into a Maryland mine. Yeah, and there, and there was a silver mine not far from here near Sykesville, so we know that they were mining copper and silver in this region. Very cool. So the first thing I'm seeing is these little quartz stringers along here, and this is what I look for in my mine. Quartz typically holds a lot of precious metals and copper and silver. Uh, so that's a really interesting first indication. And then the rock type is, uh, looks like a lightly metamorphosed sedimentary rock, which just is kind of a fancy way of saying this used to be mud and dirt that's been squished into a rock. But you can see all the waves and the, the uh, texture to the rock. And a lot of times during that metamorphism process, it would consolidate the, the minerals and the, and the metals into these little quartz stringers. So that's, I mean, we're, we're in the right, the right looking spot. We're in the right zone. So, and then looking back down into the workings, this drift is huge. The old mines in the west, they, they made holes just big enough they could stand up in, like five feet uh, high or, or to the back. And this one's like 15 feet tall. It's huge. I've never seen a mine like this. Typically, this mine is flooded, so it, you really can't go very far down in it. But uh, today, for some reason, it's dry, and that allowed us to explore the entire length. There's an old drill hole. That's the steel they were using. So this would be considered uh, a drift mine. So we're in the drift of the mine, and the ceiling is called the back. So the back in this mine is a little bit dodgy because it's this shaley, slaty stuff, and it's over time, it's just pieces of rock have fallen off and I don't know if you can see it in the light but there's just piles of rock that have come off the back and you don't want to get hit in the head with that stuff so that's the back and then the sides of the drift are called the ribs so we have the left and right rib and then all the way at the back here maybe another 50 or 75 feet is called the working face and that's where the miners would, would work and they'd be drilling out the working face drilling out their holes in a very specific pattern that they would load with explosives blast it and then they'd come in and they'd muck out all the rock out towards the portal, dump it into the dump pile, 
and they'd, if there's any ore in there, they'd sort, hand sort the, the muck once they got it out into the light so they could see the minerals, the copper, whatever they were mining. We may not have found any treasures in that mine, but it's a good thing we have all this gold to finish up here in the forge. The stamping that we're using the screw press for is called coining, and that is what we're going to be doing with this gold. It'll allow us to get this artwork set into the solid gold. We're using the torch on the coins to heat them up slightly. This is so that when we quench them, they come apart because they have a different coefficient of expansion. Gonna throw it, huh? Yeah, not too crazy. Uh, you know, you'll feel the weight of the wheel. Okay. Just give it a little tap again. Okay. So that snap that you hear, I don't think it's something breaking, I think it's the uh, it's the oil exploding. So the coin will cool much faster than the thing, and that's why it's coming off. I got my very first gold coin from gold that I mined, smelted, brought over here, and we got our, our very first coin. That is, that is very cool. All that's really left is the polish. We're gonna go to a Scotch-Brite wheel that kind of burnishes the surface. Uh, it does lift a little tiny bit of gold off. But it's not a grinding wheel, it just kind of scrubs the surface and gives us a finer cut. And Jason can go back and run these in a tumbler and get them nice and bright for the future. Gary. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, that was, really. I mean, we had our little issues there, but we overcame sure. it. I really appreciate the help, and um, you know, I learned a lot. Yeah, you really helped me out making gold Anytime. coins. My gold. Really fun. It was really. awesome. Cool. Let's yeah. do it again. Yeah, let's do it. Next season, I'll bring Absolutely. more. Absolutely. I'll bring more with me. Click the logo to subscribe, or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel, or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.